funny stuff from that man. I love him. I'm Dave Serio. It's Saturday morning. You ought to know on Free Talk 930 WFMD. We've got Craig Ship from Frederick.com on the line. Good morning, Craig. Good morning. Hey. And it is a little bit rainy, but yeah. uh, tomorrow it's supposed to be in the 50s and sunny. Yep. I heard 60s by maybe Monday or Tuesday. I uh, should I say yeah. Monday, or, yeah, Monday or Tuesday. Yep. Yep. Very good. Um, so I have something I want to give you an update on. One or two times in the past, we've mentioned the subject of Bitcoin on the show. Yes. And the Bitcoin ETFs launched a little over a month ago. They're, that's an exchange-traded fund. Okay. And they are the most successful exchange-traded funds in history. Okay. They've outperformed like 5,000 other ETFs that have come before them by, by large measure. And there were, I think, nine new ones launched at the, on the same date. A bunch of uh, these companies, including BlackRock, the biggest asset manager in the world, had these ETF applications in, and they finally got approved. It's been many years uh, that, that various organizations have tried to get a Bitcoin ETF approved, and they were always denied. They were finally approved, and they've been tremendously successful. And the Bitcoin halving, this is another thing, is coming in April. So the number of Bitcoin that are issued each day is going to be cut in half in April. So we've got all this demand rolling in from these ETFs buying up Bitcoin, and it's going to supply is going to be cut in half in April. So things okay. are getting interesting. Well, help help me out here. I am not a Bitcoiner. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't mm -hmm. do anything with digital currency. I'm not saying uh -huh. I never would, but I'm just saying I'm not now. Uh -huh. So help yeah. me out here. First of all, why was it difficult for them to get the approval what 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 is what stands in their way of approvals there are still a lot of people that are against bitcoin speci specifically big banks are very much against it because it disintermediates them mm -hmm. uh, people can in effect be their own bank with bitcoin you can hold your own bitcoin you can move it to anybody in the world without any middleman so you don't need a bank so they've been fighting it uh, some politicians have been fighting it because they like to have control over what you do with your money and they can't control Bitcoin. So they've been fighting it. OK. But what has happened is the people have kind of won out here in, in that so many people were requesting this and asking BlackRock, hey, I want to invest in this. And they were going elsewhere to buy it. And so BlackRock was seeing this. And since they have so much pull, political pull, they were able to get it across the finish line and get it approved. It would have never been approved if it wasn't for BlackRock. Okay, so let's talk the risk. Every mm -hmm. every financial institution, there's risk. Okay, anytime that you mm -hmm. you know put money in, whether it's a stock market or whether it's a bank or whether it's whatever, there is some risk involved. What kind of yes. risk are we talking about with with this company? Um, well, are you talking about BlackRock or, or Bitcoin? Well, I guess either either in this particular okay. situation. Okay. I mean, so 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 here's here's the thing. As there's something called the Lindy effect. As something is around, each year it's around longer, it's more likely it's gonna stay around. Good. And Good Bitcoin, the more it becomes adopted by various organizations and entities like BlackRock and, and others, that it is becoming more and more mainstream. The stronger it, it is, is right. The, it is still only maybe 1% of the addressable market is in Bitcoin. So it's still very early. Mm -hmm. But every year that goes by, it becomes what I would call de-risked, less and less risk because right. more and more people are in. Now, the downside to that is the price is getting higher. So now it's around 60000 of Bitcoin. At the beginning of the year, it was 40000 mm -hmm. And so... This is driving the price of Bitcoin up, so it's making it more expensive to buy Bitcoin. Uh, but there are a lot of experts that say that this thing could end up being worth a million dollars per Bitcoin. So, you know, it's it's a finite asset. There's only 21 million of them worldwide. Right. That's not very many. And 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 okay. it doesn't see a situation where that would increase. No, it can't. It's, okay. it's, it's hard set in the code. Okay. The, the way it works is it's totally decentralized. There are thousands and thousands of nodes running on computers all around the world and Bitcoin miners that are mining the Bitcoin that are basically securing the network is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it can't be hacked. It can't be manipulated by governments. It, it, 
China tried to ban it because they can't control it and they like total control. They right. tried to ban Bitcoin mining and they were only quasi successful. They got rid of some of the miners, but there's still a bunch of them there. And so it is a thousand headed monster that is very hard to stop. It was designed that way specifically. Mm -hmm. Right. The, per the person that coded it wanted it to be anti-fragile because if it could be shut down by a government or whatever, then it's useless. True. And so it was designed specifically to not be able to be attacked, hacked, shut down, anything like that. And it's and it's a computer science breakthrough. We never had anything like this in the past that is an independent network that you can send value over the Internet, in fact, money over the Internet without a third party. If you do it right now with the normal method, you're going through PayPal or all these third parties. Right. Right. They're they're in the middle and they're taking a percentage or whatever, you know, credit card companies, whatever. Mm -hmm. and this doesn't have a middleman. This has people all around the world agreeing to run the software voluntarily. And if they run the software according to the rules, they're good. They're part of the network. If they violate the rules, they're just ignored okay. and they're no longer part of the network. So that's just a 10,000 of a view of how it works. But gotcha. it's a fascinating computer science breakthrough. Uh, that has grassroots, has taken off, and now the big, big boys are coming in, the Black Rocks of the world, the Fidelities of the world. Now that they're in, it's it's serious business. <laughs> is it? Uh, is it Bitcoin been around for like 15 years now? 15 years, 15 yeah. years. Very good. All right, anything else going on in the Frederick area, sir, that we should be concerned about and, and interested in? Yes, we got a bunch of events. So at facebook.com slash Frederick County slash events, 